right from the childhood. Hazrat Maulana Sahib, he has no interest in worldly matters. He used to do Jamaat's work uh, during the day, and in the evening, he started trade. He was the, a, a complete statue of humbleness. A'uzu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and welcome to another episode of Servants of Allah. In this series, we have heard some truly astonishing accounts from some of the early missionaries of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. We have spoken of their immense sacrifices, dedication, and particularly their love and passion to serve Islam and Ahmadiyya. Inshallah, in today's program, we will be discussing the life of another very prominent missionary of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mulana Nazir Ahmed Mubashir Sahib. And joining us here in the studio for our studio discussion is his nephew Khalid Munir Ahmed Sahib. Khalid Sahib, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Wa Assalamu wa Rahmatullah. And Jazakallah for joining us here in the studio. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, Khalid Sahib, before we speak about the various aspects of Mulana Nazir Sahib's life, if I could ask you if you could kindly just give us a very brief uh, introduction to uh, Mulana Sahib's life. Yeah. <coughs> Hazrat Malala Nazira Sahib was my mamu uncle. He was born in 1910. Um, uh, my grandfather, Malala Nazira Mubashir Sahib's father's uh, profession was, uh, but by profession he was farmer. Before the birth of Hazrat Malala Nazira Mubashir Sahib, uh, his about eight siblings, they passed away in infancy. When the time of Hazrat Mulana Mubashir Sahib came, then Hazrat Ulam Hassan Sahib saw a dream in which he was told that this time this baby will survive, and there was a hint that uh, his life should be devoted for the service of Islam. And by the grace of God, this uh, dream came true, and uh, this child survived. He survived, and uh, his initial education was from Sialkot. After his initial education, um, Hazrat Ulam uh, Hassan Sahib, he took his son to Qadiyan for admitting in to the uh, Madrasa Ahmadiyya. Um, and in fact, you know, um, even though he knew that he was going to devote this son for the service of Islam, in fact, when he took him to uh, Madrasa Ahmadiyya, yeah. I think that was a very emotional moment. It was very difficult for him to detach from him. Yes. Because your sister, Shaida Saiba, in this clip that we can show you, she actually recalls that, uh, that, that event uh, and you know, the emotional attachment that he had with his son. Yeah. <laughs> چھوٹا سا بچہ اور اتنی عرصے کے بعد وہ بچہ پیدا ہوا نانا جان کو ان کے ساتھ محبت بھی بہت تھی وہ قادیان ان کو چھوڑنے گئے تو فرط جذبات سے رو پڑ رو پڑتے تھے بار بار جاتے تھے بار بار واپس آتے تھے اور ان کا ان کی محبت کا یہ حالت حالت تھی کہ ان سے کھڑا نہیں ہوا جا رہا تھا جب بار بار انہوں نے اس طرح کیا تو پھر مولانا نظیر احمد مبشر صاحب نے اپنے والد کو کہا کہ بجے آپ واپس چلے جائیے مجھے خدا کے ہاتھ پہ چھوڑ دیں خیر پھر اللہ تعالیٰ کے فضل ہوا الحمد للہ آپ نے جامعہ میں میں پڑھا تو آپ نے دیکھا کہ ان سے ایک سینئر طالب علم ہیں جن کے پاس کتابوں کا خرچہ نہیں تھا اور وہ غریب تھے آپ نے اپنے والد کو خط لکھا کہ اس طرح ایک یہاں پہ ایک طالب علم ہے جن کے پاس اخراجات نہیں ہیں تو آپ یوں کریں کہ آپ مجھے پیسے بھیجوائیں تاکہ میں ان کے لیے کتابیں خرید لوں وہ اس سال استعمال کر لیں گے جب پھر وہ استعمال کر چکیں گے تو اس کے بعد اگلے سال میں استعمال کر لوں گا ایکچولی آئی لائک ٹو ایڈ ون تھنگ ہیئر دیٹ رائٹ فرام دی چائلڈ ہڈ حضرت مولانا صاحب ہی ہیز نو انٹرسٹ ان ورلڈلی میٹرس وین ہز فادر لیفٹ ہم دیئر دین ہی went to the local sweet shop where he has an account and uh, told him that uh, whenever, this is my son, whenever he comes to you, whatever he wants, whenever he wants, just give him 
at the end of the month, I will come and I will pay you. And that was the tradition at that, at that time. Uh, I mean, this kind of liberty, the youth normally actually explore this thing and they use this thing. But uh, Maulana Nazir Masab, he never uh, went to that shop, he never buy, buy, bought anything. Uh, so this was his yes, character. Simplicity, right, yes, from yes, a young age. Uh, Khalid Sahib, you mentioned the fact that, you know, just after completing his primary education, uh, Mulana Nazir Sahib uh, entered into Madrasa Ahmadiyya, and uh, his life as a, a devotee started right from that very young age. Uh, if you could just tell us very briefly uh, the various services he rendered uh, throughout his life for Islam and Ahmadiyya, and the various posts and offices he held. Uh, yes, uh, when he passed his uh, Mawli Fazl exam, after that he became Murabi and uh, then after a few years he was sent to Ghana. That was his first appointment over there. And he served there for about in total 23 years, uh, in three stages. The first one was the longest one when he spent about 11 years there. He went there, he established some um, and jamaats over there, he trained people. And uh, then after that, the second phase came. He came back, in nine, then he went back in 1949. From 1949 till 1954, he again uh, served um, in Ghana. Then for about one year, he came back in 1954. And uh, then in 1955, he went back. Uh, then he spent his life there till 1961. After that, he came back to Pakistan. And uh, in Pakistan, uh, he held offices first of Naib Wakil Tabshir. Then he was given the responsibility of uh, as a, a Nazim Tarul uh, Then in 1982, uh, he was uh, um, given the responsibility of uh, Wakil Talim. Uh, he was a member of uh, Ufta, uh, Futawa Committee and uh, Majlis e as well. Uh, after his retirement, he was he served as a Naib Sadar Tariq yeah. mm -hmm. So this was his. Uh, the grace of Allah, he um, had the opportunity to render a number of services for Ahmadiyyat. Uh, but you just mentioned that he spent almost 23 years in Ghana. Yes. If you could just elaborate on that, I mean. This is obviously a significant part of his life in Ghana. If you could just tell us a little bit more about his time in Ghana. Yes. Mm, uh, let me, uh, before I tell you what happened in Ghana, I will start right from the beginning at how he was chosen. Uh, after passing his exam, he, uh, there was actually no money Jamaat has no financial resources that they can send their missionaries abroad or anywhere at that time. And so he has to work with his father. So he started to uh, help his father uh, on, the, on the farms. And uh, once uh, his uh, Naranjan was uh, ill and he was admitted in hospital, and uh, Nazir Bashir Sahib was looking after him there in Deska. City, uh, city Daska, uh, he was reading Al Fazl. He saw advertisement uh, which was given by Hazrat Mullah Nazir Ali Sahib that we need a volunteer who can uh, serve in Ghana. And uh, his job description will be that he would uh, train people, uh, local people, uh, how to preach and uh, um, uh, train them how to uh, become a murabbi. And, uh, but Jamaat will give them a nominal uh, living expenses because Jamaat has no resources. He uh, read this one and instantly he wrote back to Hazrat Murana Sahib that I offer my services unconditionally. Hazrat Mulan was very happy. He took this letter to Hazrat Khalifa Sani. Hazrat Khalifa Sani, when he listened to this thing and saw, um, he said this thing, yes, took him. The people who put conditions, they don't work. 
So there his journey started. Then he... The departure, when they actually went, it was actually an extremely special event because um, he was going into far off land, but at the same time there was as Mulana Jalaldi Sham Sahib. Yes. And I believe that uh, Mulana Nazir Ahmed Ali Sahib. Yes. All three were actually departing at the same time. And this was a very special event in Qadian that everyone, you know, flocked in their multitudes to come and bid farewell to them. Yeah. And even Hazrat Amir al-Mu'minin as Khalifat al you know, he also came as well to, you know, send them off with his, uh, with his prayers. And in fact, in the next clip, uh, your sister actually mentions this, 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 you know, this very emotional uh, atmosphere that was in Qadian at that time. پھر دو فروری انیس سو چھتیس کو تین مبلغین تھے ایک مولانا نظیر نظیر احمد مبشر صاحب دوسرے مولانا نظیر احمد علی اور تیسرے مولانا جلال الدین شمس یہ تینوں اکٹھا سفر پہ روانہ ہوئے اور جب منظر تھا ہزاروں کی تعداد میں لوگ باہر کھڑے ہیں قادیان کے اسٹیشن پہ الوداع کرنے کے لیے محبت اور دعا اور آنسو اور سا اور پھر خلیفہ ثانی بھی تشریف لائے پھر حضور اسی گاڑی میں سوار ہوئے اور حضور آپ کے ساتھ امرتسر تک گئے اور دعاؤں کے ساتھ آپ کو رخصت کیا اس کے بعد ہمارے ماموں بتایا کرتے تھے کہ اس کے بعد اتنا کٹھن سفر تھا یہ یہ وہ وقت تھا جب جماعت کے پاس مالی مشکلات کا دور تھا نہایت تھوڑا تنخواہیں اور جہاز کی عرشوں پہ سفر کرنا اس وقت تو یہ سوال ہی نہیں پیدا ہوتا تھا جو آج کی آسائشیں اور اب کم آئے گی اور قسم پر سے اور آج اس وقت آج ہی ان کا ساری کام آتی تھی فرام دس اسٹارٹ یور جرنی فرام امرتسر بائی ٹرین دے وینٹ ٹو ڈیلی فرام ڈیلی دے وینٹ بائی اگین بائی ٹرین ٹو کولمبو فرام کولمبو دے Uh, st- uh, ca- um, carried on their journey by sea. That was a Japanese ship. And uh, uh, they proceeded from there to Cairo and they went to Port Said. Uh, in Port Said, uh, they went to uh, Ca- Cairo and uh, from there, Hazrat Mawlana Nazir Ali Sahib, he went to uh, Mecca for performing Hajj. While during that time, Hazrat Mawlana Nazir Ali Sahib he stayed there and during their stay he visited al uh, azhar university there um, he was um, um, having chat with uh, local uh, students and uh, when he was talking in, uh, in arabic when the student uh, he re- he uh, knew this thing that he uh, he asked actually where did you learn this arabic from He said, I learned this from Qadian, which is a remote village in India. And he was so surprised that uh, the man in that area, and he's speaking so uh, high standard of uh, Arabic. Uh, the, I mean, they, he engaged himself in preaching over, over there as well. In the meanwhile, then when Mulana Rizilam uh, Sahib came back, then they started their journey to Ghana. They arrived in Ghana after a long distance of journey, which was by, mainly by road. And uh, there his, he started his job. His first, actually, uh, address was in Arabic um, to the lo- lo- uh, local people. Uh, then he started to train them. And he uh, explained to them different issues, like, uh, like Khatman Nabeen, um, the advent of um, uh, Messiah, the, de- and, and the death of Messiah, all these issues. And he wrote over there a book in Arabic. Uh, his name was Al-Kolul Sri Fil Fi Zahur Al-Mahdi. This was in Arabic, uh, which uh, addressed all these issues. Uh, this book actually has been after that published and it was, it was very popular in an, uh, uh, Arab countries. Uh, during, I mean, then he started to um, train people, the people started to go out and they started to spread uh, the message of Islam. Uh, in the meanwhile, one incident happened that uh, 
of a new, f uh, freshly prepared uh, Murabiyan, 20 of them were arrested by a chief param um, paramount. And Hadat uh, Murara Nazir Ali Sahib sent Hadat Murara Nazir Ali Sahib to go and ask him that why uh, this chief has arrested th these people. Uh, he took two local translators because by then uh, his English was not uh, that high and he was reluctant to speak. Uh, he took two uh, translators and he went to the chief and first he introduced himself and then he uh, uh, told about the teaching of Islam. Then he inquired that what is the crime these 20 people have committed that you have arrested him, then them. Uh, he said that, look, they are illiterate people. They have no right to preach. And Mullah uh, Nazir Mubasha Sahib asked him, that, sir, can you tell me one thing? What did you think? Who is more clever, farmers or fishermen? He said, the farmers. He said, if the followers of Hazrat Messiah, they were fishermen, they had right to preach, then how come these people cannot preach? He was a Christian person, uh, he understood this thing, then he said, okay, and then he released them. Uh, there, he's actually, uh, as I mentioned before, that the uh, Jamaat has very limited resources. His routine was this, that uh, he used to do Jamaat's work uh, during the day, and in the evening, he started trade. The trade he started like this, that he uh, wrote letter to his father, that because he was from Pakistan, uh, from Shalakot, which is very famous for the sports goods. And uh, he asked him that if you can arrange to send some sports um, goods to he here, then I will sell here and will make some money. He sent a consignment uh, and uh, he, and luckily he met a Syrian trader who bought his import and he started to sell. So in this way, they started to earn money and uh, by the grace of God, uh, it was the great, uh, there was so much profit that he, he didn't have any need to get any money from, from even from his father or from Jamaat. Or from, not only this thing, he uh, uh, collected some, uh, money that uh, when the, uh, there was a the time that Hazrat uh, Khalifa al Masih II, he sent Mullah Nazir uh, Ali Sahib to Sierra Leone. And at that time, again, there was no money. Uh, so Hazrat Mullah Nazir al Masih Sahib, he paid out of his pocket all the expenses for Hazrat Mulana Nazir Ali Sahib's um, journey and the other, I think they, at that time they asked for a surety as well. So he um, gave the money. Uh, in the, along with this uh, trade, he wrote a letter to uh, a, an agency in Lahore his name was Amrad Dhara Agency. And uh, he imported some medicines. So he can give, because there was no medicine available uh, for the, our own people. So he started to uh, give for some, um, common ailments. So in this way, he was doing Khidmat Khalq. There was one, a more uh, incident that uh, when Hazrat Mullah Nazir Ali uh, Sahib was about to depart for Sierra Leone, and Hazrat uh, Mullah Nazir Ali Sahib, he was naturally a bit worried that uh, because he was working along with him, and he said that, look, uh, look you are leaving me alone here, and uh, uh, my language is not up to that standard, especially in English, uh, that uh, I can manage all these things, and I am a bit worried. Um, and uh, Mulana Nazir Ali Sahib said that, uh, look Mulana Sahib, the stick of Moses, that was a non-living thing. God made use of that. 
and you're a scholar, God will definitely make you up your services, so don't worry. Then he was uh, satisfied. Absolutely, in fact, <laughs> throughout his time in Ghana, he, you know, there was, you know, divine help throughout. Yes. Um, in fact, there was an incident that uh, one of uh, uh, Nazir um, Bashar and Nazir's son narrates about uh, an earthquake that happened in Ghana and the significance it had uh, with, a, in, with a debate, in fact. Uh, we can play that clip for you now. I, I will narrate you one incident uh, when he was a missionary in Ghana. In 1939, uh, young man returned from Saudi Arabia to Ghana. He had gone there for some education. When he came back, uh, he was the leader of the non-Ahmadis. And he star they started to incite the people against the Ahmadis. And they used to say that if, a pro the, the, if the promised Messiah or Mahdi has come, then we, we need a sign about that. My father invited the man to have a monazra or debate, and uh, they declined to have a debate. They said they just wanted a sign. And for them, the most important sign was an earthquake. They said that will be the sign of Mehdi. So my father went back to Salpon, which was the headquarters, and uh, he distributed uh, various pamphlets regarding the signs of the coming of the promised Messiah and Mehdi. And then they arranged for a general meeting to discuss th those signs and you know about the coming of the promised messiah but uh, just before they were going to have the meeting an earthquake hit ghana at, at that time you know and then during the whole night there were several tremors so by the grace of god that was a big sign so the next day uh, the people who were non-muslims they told the non Ahmadis that you were demanding a sign so you've seen a sign so by the grace of Allah after that uh, a lot of people converted to Ahmadiyyat so that's what one of the incidents otherwise there are other incidents but uh, this is one of them I wanted to narrate to you. Well, so there are many uh, faith inspiring incidents in the life of uh, Mulana Nazir Ahmad Bashar Sahib which suggest that he had a very strong and a very close uh, relationship with Allah the Almighty if I could ask you if you could just shed some light on this aspect of his life in terms of his link and relationship with Allah the Almighty. Uh, yes, by the grace of God, he has very close relationship with God right from his youth. Uh, when he passed his, uh, no, sorry, when he mm, did his exam, and uh, after that there was uh, some time that they were waiting, he was waiting for results. That was the final exam of Moli Fazal, which was quite a tough exam. And uh, he was at, uh, at that time touring uh, the different uh, majalis of uh, District Shalkot, and he was leading a prayer, a Zuhar prayer, uh, in um, Pasrur, in city Pasrur. And that, uh, in the Saita, he heard this voice, Nazir Ahmad Pass. Not only him, the same voice was heard one of the congregant, Hazrat Mulana, uh, Hazrat Muhammad Hussain Sahib. And uh, within those days, actually, his father saw the same kind of dream when he saw uh, a tablet on which, uh, with golden ink, it was inscribed Nazir Ahmad Pass. And by the grace of God, uh, he passed. Mm, in Ghana, uh, from our local school, uh, the teachers of our local school, they came to Mulan mm, Mul Mul Sahib and they asked him to address um, scholarly people of who are, who are holding offices. And those majority of them were English. Hazrat Mulan Sahib was reluctant to address because he said that I can talk face to face, I can talk in villages, but uh, speaking in front of uh, scholarly people who are uh, quite educated, uh, my English is not up to that standard. 
uh, but they were insisting. They said, okay, give me one week, let me pray to God, and then I will give you answer. He prayed to God. He continuously prayed to God for one week. Then his, he, his heart got satisfaction that yes, then after that he decided that yes, I will speak. On that day, he went, the topic of the speech was, which religion is universal, Christianity or Islam? <coughs> he started by the, uh, with the name of Allah, and then he said that when I started, after that, I don't know where the words were. Coming from, it seemed to me as I am speaking my own language. He delivered his speech. After that, there was a question answer session. So many people asked questions. He satisfied uh, uh, all of them. One question was very interesting. Uh, one priest asked him that you, majority of your references were from Bible. Why haven't you quoted any of your Quran uh, reference? And Hazrat uh, Mahmoudjan said, actually, the Quran has given, has given me this authority to use Bible and Torah. And then he was, he didn't, he said, okay. This address was so popular that it was the hot topic um, of the town in that week. The following Sunday in the, in the church congregation, the assistant priest told to their um, members that you call yourself Christian, but in previous Friday, Murana Nazir Mubashar has proved that Islam is the universal religion and the Christianity is only for the son of um, Israel, Israelite. Uh, then actually he saw some dreams where God, where God told him um, in advance. Uh, one dream was very interesting that was about the defeat of uh, Germany and Hitler especially. Uh, during Second World War, he saw a dream. That he's, he saw a dream that uh, there are two bull. One is very, quite heavy and powerful, and the, the other is a bit skinnier than the other one. And they are in a marsh place. And uh, he, he said that in, in dreams he, he felt that he should pick this, the one bull. He put his hand under the belly of a bull, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, um, a stronger one, and he lift, it lifted. When he lifted it up, he shrank into it in the form of a mouse. Then, uh, from his heart, uh, he, he was told that uh, this, is a, this is the Hitler. He did the same thing, he picked the other one, other bull, and he again converted into, uh, shrank into mouse. And then again, he felt that this is a, a Mussolini. The next day, he told his um, dream to uh, the people. And uh, he said that, uh, I think that the Hitler and Mussolini will be defeated, and the same thing happened. Uh, uh, he, in one of his dream, he saw Hazrat Sulaqim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw that uh, there is a kind of, uh, it looks as if it's a day of judgment. And Hazrat Sulaqim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is facing towards uh, west. And behind him, Hazrat Masih Maud is standing. And then after that, uh, Hazrat Mullah Razi Ramazan is standing. He said that uh, Muhammad Rasulullah uh, was as addressing, and uh, then suddenly he uh, looked behind, and he said three times by pointing towards Adam Masih mouth that this is my promised Messiah. This is my promised Messiah. This is my promised Messiah. 
So uh, this was uh, his right. You know, another aspect of you know his close relationship with Allah that we find was that his the due importance he gave to uh, Salat. And in the next clip, uh, his son, uh, Dr. Munir Saab, actually elaborates on this, which we can see. Then, one or two other things I remember, the time of the prayer of Namaz was so much, that one time, two or three times, there were two operations. One time, there was a prostate in the first time. The first time, the first time, the first time, the first time, was to tell me, what is the time of the prayer? مجھے تیمم کے لیے مٹی لاکھے دے دو بیٹھ کے اوپر ہی اور تیمم کیا اور پھر نماز ادا کی وفات سے تقریباً ڈیٹھ دو سال پہلے ان کا حرنیہ کا بڑا کمپلیکیٹڈ اپریشن ہوا تھا سائز آدم عزم و شرمہ صاحب نے وہ اپریشن کیا تھا اور پہلے دعا کے لیے حضور کو بھی خلیفت المسیح رحمہ رحم اللہ کو بھی لکھا اور پھر اپریشن کیا خاصا پیچیدہ تھا لیکن وہ جب آئی سیو میں ان کو ہوش آئی تو سب سے پہلے میں نے جبار صاحب مرہوم کا کہا کہ انہوں نے سب سے پہلے مطالبہ کرنا ہے کہ میں نے نماز پڑھنی ہے تو مجھے تیمم اور وہی ہوا جب ہوش آئی ہے تھوڑی سی تو انہوں نے وہی مٹی کا جو میں نے پہلے وہاں پہ رکھتی ہوئی تھی اس سے تیمم کی اور نماز پڑھی کہ ایک دفعہ اپنے گھر میں تھے اور پلنگ پر لیٹے ہوئے تھے اور اس کے پلنگ کے ساتھ ہی کھڑکی تھی تو لیٹے ہوئے تھے تو لیٹے لیٹے ان کے دل میں خیال آیا کہ یا اللہ میں بڑے عرصے سے تیری عبادت کر رہا ہوں اور نفل بھی پڑھتا ہوں اور جب سے میں نمازیں پڑھنی شروع کی ہیں میں نے کوئی ایک تحجد بھی نہیں چھوڑا تو تو مجھے اپنے آپ کو دکھا تو صحیح تو ہے کیسا فرماتے ہیں کہ جو ہی میں نے یہ کہا تو ایک روشنی کا بہت بڑا بہت سا گولہ کھڑکی میں سے اندر آیا ایسا کہ میں اس کی برداشت نہ کر سکتا اور اسی وقت بے ہوش ہو گیا اور آدھے گھنٹے تک بے ہوش رہے اور کہتے ہیں کہ جب جو ہی مجھے ہوش آئی تو میں نے کہا کہ یا اللہ بس تو گویا یہ اسی طرح کا واقعہ ہے کہ جس طرح حضرت موسیٰ علیہ السلام نے اللہ تعالیٰ سے کہا تھا کہ یا اللہ میں تمہیں دیکھنا چاہتا ہوں اور اللہ تعالیٰ نے کہا کہ تو دیکھ تو نہیں سکتا ہاں اگر تیرا اسرار ہے تو تو اس پہاڑ کی طرف دیکھ میں اس پر تجلی کروں گا اور جب حضرت موسیٰ علیہ السلام نے پہاڑ کی طرف دیکھا اور اللہ تعالیٰ نے اس پر تجلی فرمائی تو آپ بے ہوش ہو کر گر پڑے تو یہ گویا اسی طرح کا واقعہ ہے میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ اس میں نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی اس حدیث کی بھی تفسیر ہے جس میں آپ نے فرمایا کہ علماء امتی کا انبیاء بنی اسرائیل وہ آپ کے ساتھ یہ واقعہ اسی طرح پیش آیا جس طرح اللہ اللہ تعالیٰ کا جس طرح حضرت موسیٰ علیہ السلام کے ساتھ اللہ تعالیٰ کا واقعہ پیش آیا تھا the the immense relationship with Allah the Almighty and their obedience to and subservience to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasallam and their strong uh, obedience and attachment to Khilafat Ahmadiyya that God showed these great signs and these these um, incidents of divine help and one thing you know we've interviewed many people uh, uh, on this program and the one thing we find common in everyone is that the their relationship with Khalifa al Masih and the complete obedience to him. And this was something I wanted to ask you about, uh, about Hazrat Mawlana uh, Nazir Anand Mubashar, I mean, his relationship to Khalifa al Masih. He served under three Khalifas, Khalifa Sani, Khalifa Salis, and Khalifa Rabi. Uh, I mean, for Mubalak, obedience is the one of the most things. Uh, when he was chosen for Ghana, at that time uh, he met Khalifa Sani, and uh, Khalifa Sani uh, gave him advice. And uh, at that, on that occasion, Khalifa Sani uh, gave him the title of Mubashar. Before that, his name was Murad Nazir, Ahmed Shalkoti, and from that day, it was, uh, his name was Mullah Nazir Abu Bashar. And uh, he, he proved Mubashar for, to be a Mubashar for the Falih Mahat I mean, throughout his life, he used to continuously um, write to Khalifa Sani about, for, advice and for prayer 
uh, for and whatever he wants to do, he always get permission first. Then, uh, Hazrat Khalifa Sani was so happy with his work that uh, in one of his Friday sermon, he mentioned about this. I will quote first, if you uh, allow me. Mawli Nazira Mubashra Shal Koti, aaj kal gold coast mein kaam kar rahe hain. Yahaan go jamaatein pehle se kaim hain, magar wo akele kai hazaar ki jamaat ko sambhale huye hain. Phir inki kurbani is lihaz se bhi khasusiyah rakhti hai, ke wo honorary tawar per kaam kar rahe hain, jamaat inki koi madad nahi karti. Wo bhi saat aat saal se apne azizon aur rishtadaron se juda hain. And uh, then when he came back uh, after 11 years, and then a dinner was organized in the honor of Hazrat Mawlana Zira Mubashir Sahib, where Hazrat Khalifa Sani was uh, present. And uh, there he mentioned one more thing, which, but I will give you first the background of this thing, that uh, in Africa and Ghana especially, there was no concept of minarets or they, they used to uh, have a mosque, but they, they don't know how to build minarets. Hazrat Mawlana Nazir Sahib, they showed him by making a minaret uh, with clay, how to make it. And then they uh, made the minarets over there. Uh, and Hazur was very happy on this occasion. He mentioned this thing with these words that, <coughs> وہ قومیں جن کی تعداد ہم سے کہیں زیادہ ہے انہیں یہ سعادت حاصل نہیں اور مولی نظیر مبشر کو اس عمارت کی بنیادی اینٹ بننے کی سعادت حاصل ہوئی It means that those nations who were far more greater in number than us they could not achieve this thing which alone مولی نظیر مبشر has achieved uh, which was, uh, he was actually referring to towards the minerals and the built. This is a very profound statement because obviously from what we learn from that is that, you know, the, the actual introduction of minarets in Africa was actually introduced by Hazrat uh, Mulana Nazir Anand Bashir Sahib. Yeah. And Khali Sahib, apart from his, um, you know, immense love for Allah the Almighty and uh, his unconditional obedience to Khalifa Tul Masih, as you have just mentioned, um, you know, Hazrat uh, Mulana Nazir al Mubashir was a man of many qualities. And in fact, in our next clip, uh, his son actually speaks of the, the, the various qualities that he had. Allah Kelawa Dartenite, who is Muslim, but a Jagabe Badri, so no Kavleki, or Ek or Bath Joyce is a man make a hat of Grelu. Okay, Wallace of Kajagraoga, Hindu say, Lane the Enpubal, Kubeche to Smith and Azoga, Hindu Nesaf in Karkadi, manifesta Yansenik Rana. وہ کہا جی مہار صاحب مہار غلام حسن میرے دادا کا نام تھا کہ غلام حسن جب آپ کا بیٹا مدرسہ احمدیہ میں جو پڑھتا ہے قادیان سے وہ آئے گا تو جو وہ فیصلہ کرے گا میں وہ مانوں گا ہمارے والد صاحب بھی جب آئے تو انہوں نے جب سنا تو اپنے باپ کے خلاف فیصلہ دے دیا کیونکہ صاحب کتاب کا فیصلہ تو جب دیکھا تو باپ کے خلاف فیصلہ دے دیا والد صاحب نے جب یہ فیصلہ دے دیا تو ظاہر ہے ایک ان کو تھوڑا سا یہ بھی ہوا کہ مجھے شاید جھوٹا کر دیا اس میں لیندین کے معاملے میں تو میرے دادا جو ہے نا وہ نراز ہو گئے نراز ہو کے تو تیسری منزل پہ چلے گئے اور سخت نراز میرے بیٹے نے مجھے کہیں کا نہیں چھوڑا کہ میرے خلاف فیصلہ دے دیا ہے تو جو اور بزرگ تھے خاندان کے انہوں نے آ کے کہا کہ مار صاحب آپ کو تو فخر سے چلنا چاہیے گلیوں میں باعث سب یہ باتیں ہو رہی ہیں کہ واہ مہار غلام حسن کا بیٹا دیکھو کتنا انصاف پسند ہے اس نے پرواہ نہیں کیوں حق میں فیصلہ دیا ہے اور اپنے باپ کے خلاف فیصلہ دے دیا جب یہ بات تو ان کے ذہن میں آئی تو پھر دادا کو واقعی اس بات کے احساس ہوا پھر آ کے تو والد صاحب بھی ڈر کے مارے جا کے تو مسجد میں کئی سو گئے ہوئے تھے وہاں سے پھر جا کے بیٹے کو پیار سے بلا کے لے کے آئے کہا لگے نظیر احمدہ تو میرا سیر اچھا کر دیتا ہے آپ کا لباس بہت ہی سادہ تھا اور ہمیشہ ہی دوسرا دور غانہ میں مکمل کر کے پاکستان گیا تو لوگوں نے کہا کہ مولی صاحب آپ تو جس طرح گئے تھے اسی طرح ہی واپس آ گیا تو کہنے لگے میں خود بدلنے گیا تھا یہ لوگوں کو بدلانے گیا تھا تو یہ لطیفہ آپ سنایا کرتے تھے جو ان کی سادگی کی ایک علامت ہے I would like to add one more thing and this is the incident that in غانہ 
uh, which shows his simplicity and uh, his humbleness. Uh, he was fond of gardening. And uh, he actually took some seeds from um, Pakistan of vegetables and he started to grow there for his own uh, vegetable like uh, okra and all these things. He was once, he was uh, working in the uh, mosque garden and he was wearing simple clothes. Well, I think he was wearing just vest and uh, a long short. Uh, a priest came. He was looking, uh, he came and uh, he asked him that, uh, I have heard about uh, Maulana Nazir, who is a murabbi here. Uh, can I um, see him? And uh, he, Maulana uh, Nazir Mubashar said, yes, I am Nazir Mubashar. And he was actually shocked. He mumbled these words, oh, great. This person, who is a statue of humbleness, am I really worthy to have a debate with him? And he went out. Uh, Mamunjan start, tried to stop him. He called him, but he didn't stop. He, got, he went out. Throughout his life, we have seen he was so simple uh, once he was, uh, he, uh, because our house was very close to uh, Masjid Aqsa in, in uh, Rabwa. And he came there after that, he was going to a meeting and uh, my father uh, um, told him that, uh, Maulana Sahib, you stay here and because you have to go, the, why, why will you go back and then we'll come again? Uh, you stay here, spend uh, this uh, time. And uh, after that, because you have to go to the other meeting, so that was the time between about two, uh, two o'clock in the afternoon till four o'clock. And uh, my sister, she turned on cooler, desert cooler we have for cooling, just like the um, air conditioning system. And uh, he said, no, I'm not going to sleep here. You want me that I should forget God? By my sister insisted, please, Mamujan, you stay, uh, sleep here. And uh, then he s slept. But after about 20 minutes, he woke up. And he was literally, he said, Astaghfirullah Rabbi, Astaghfirullah Rabbi. No, I'm not sleeping here. Okay, then we uh, switched off uh, the dance cooler. Uh, then when he woke up, uh, then that was about the Asr prayer time. And uh, my father told, my sister that uh, filled the buckets uh, so your mamu can take a bath. She filled two buckets in the bathroom and uh, said, Mahmoudjan, you can have a bath. When uh, Mahmoudjan uh, took bath and she realized that Mahmoudjan has used only one bucket. And uh, she asked, uh, Mahmoudjan, you have used only one bucket. And, uh, uh, they, um, he said to her, the, this much water is enough for a buffalo. And you want me to use all this water? Then he uh, uh, told her that Hazrat Sulaikrin even advised to a washerman that don't use the water, only use the water, whichever, whatever you is required. And, and uh, by stream, yes, fact. yes. So, this was his, the, his life throughout his life. We never saw him that he was, um, he was so simple, so humble. Yes. Uh, we his clothes were just normal and always, mm -hmm. I can say, but uh, old and worn mm -hmm. off clothes, but he never mm -hmm. felt anything again. He said, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Khalid Sahib, you were the uh, nephew of um, Mawlana uh, Nazir and Bashir Sahib. So you obviously had the opportunity to see him very closely, uh, particularly at home. Uh, if I could ask you, how was he at home in terms of his, um, you know, with the upbringing of his children, you know, with the kind treatment towards his wife as a loving father, husband. If you could just elaborate on that aspect of his character. Hazrat Mawlana Sahib, was very kind nature. He 
I haven't seen him shout, shouting on anyone or raising his voice. Uh, he always looked after his relatives, his wife, his children. Um, interesting thing is that when he was a child, he was nursed by um, many women because he was allergic to his own mother's uh, milk. So due to that thing, he has so many um, foster mothers and certainly uh, foster sisters. Whenever he would go back to uh, Shalcourt, he made sure that he visited them. And he always take, uh, he always took gifts for them. And uh, he always treated them as his real sisters. So this was his, and his attitude with other uh, relatives was the same. In fact, when we were speaking, you know, we interviewed his son as well, uh, Dr. Manisov. So he also related some very interesting memories that he had, uh, which we can play here for you. जी वो जिंदगी में उनकी जो ज़्यादा वक्त था वो तो हमारे बगैर गुजरा क्योंकि मैं तो काफ़ी देर बाद पैदा हुआ कुछ यादें जो खुद उन्होंने बताई और कुछ जो मेरे मुझे याद हैं वो बचपन से ही शुरू होती हैं जब एक बच्चा छोटा होता है तो उस वक्त उसकी जो छोटी छोटी यादें होती हैं मसरूफियत उनकी बहुत होती थी लेकिन उसके बावजूद भी जब भी वो बाहर दौरे से आते थे जमाती दौरों से मेरे लिए चॉकलेट वो खिलौने ला के देना वो मुझे बहुत अच्छी तरह से याद है प्यार का उनका ये तलक फिर वो भी मुझे याद है जब वो उंगली पकड़ के मुझे मस्जिद में लेके जाया करते थे मैं छोटा सा था जाके करता तो मैं वहाँ ना समझी में शरारते था लेकिन वो तमाम ये छोटी छोटी शरारतें जो हैं बाज़ा वो काम कर रहे होते थे दफ्तर में तो उस वक्त भी मैं शरारतें करके थोड़ा सा उनको जाके तंग ही किया करता था काम में मुखिल होके तो वो सारी ये छोटी छोटी शरारतें जो हैं वो मेरी नज़रअंदाज कर देते थे सालगिरह पे हमारे तो ये नहीं है रवाज के हम सालगिरह मनाएं लेकिन एक बात थी जब भी मेरी वो बर्थडे होती थी तो कहते थे ये पैसे लो जाओ और किसी सदक़े की मद में नादार तलबा वगैरह के मैं वो वहाँ पर जा तो अपनी पढ़ाई के लिए जमा करा दो मेरी वालदा का बीवी होने के नाते से जो उनका सलूक था वो इंतहाई एक एग्जाम्पलरी था मसाली था कि एक घर उनके ये होता कि जब मैंने पहले भी बताया कि पूरी तनख्वाह ला के तो वालदा को दे देते थे कि ये घर तुमने चलाना है तुमने जैसे चलाना है और इतना अतमाद होता था और होता था कि वो अपनी जेब में पैसे भी नहीं रखा करते थे कभी ज़रूरत हो तो फिर दोबारा वालदा से ही मांगा करते थे उन्होंने पूरा जो है उनके ऊपर जो है अतम जो है सारी ज़िंदगी रहा हर ज़िंदगी का जो है फ़ैसला वो मशवरे से किया करते थे क्या करना है घर कैसे बनाना है थोड़ी आमदन में दोनों मियाँ बीवी ने आपस में मिल के तो बड़ा अच्छा जो है एक इज़्ज़त के साथ जो है वो हमारा जो है घर का जो है ना सारा वो चलता रहा कभी भी वालदा का इतना ख्याल रखा करते थे बहुत कम आमदनी में भी वो कोशिश करते जब घाना में थे तो एक दो दफ़ा बड़ा कीमती सा वो वालदा के लिए तोहफा ले आए जो था कोई एक सूट था तो वालदा ने कहा क्यों इतना कीमती ले आए कहते मेरा दिल करता था क्योंकि आज वहाँ पे सफारत खाने में एक तकरीब थी तो वहाँ पे मैंने ये देखा था कि ये एक वहाँ पर एक बीबी थी शायद उनकी होगी सफ़ीर की तो उन्होंने पहना हुआ था तो मैंने कहा कि क्यों ना मैं वो यानी इतना वो ख्याल रखते थे कि वो इतना कीमती तोहफ़ा भी उनके लिए ले आते थे चाहे वो एक महदूद आमदनी जो थी वो उनकी होती थी खाली साहब वक्फ एसेंशली मीन्स टू गिव अप ऑल दी दम्फर्ट्स एंड द लक्शरीज दन हैज़ इन सच सर्कमस्टांसिस द रोल ऑफ द वाइफ इज पर्टिकुलरली पिवतु एंड वी फाइन दैट हज़रत मौलाना Nazira and Bashir Saab's wife played an outstanding role uh, in her support uh, to her husband. And in fact, if we continue with this uh, particular clip, um Dr. Munisa Saab actually mentions some very interesting uh, incidents and aspects of her character yeah. which show that, you know, the 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 outstanding role that she played to support her husband uh, in his work. Walda ke nikah mere wala saab ka 1928 mein hua. उस वक्त वालदा की उम्र बड़ी छोटी थी 12 साल से कम थी तो ये था कि रुखस्ताना कुछ साल बाद में करेंगे इसी दौरान में उनको जाना पड़ गया ज़िंदगी वफ करके जब घाना जाना पड़ गया तो ख्याल था कि घाना जाएंगे दो तीन साल में आ जाएंगे तो रुखस्ताना जो है वो हो जाएगा 
وہاں پہ جا کے حالات خراب ہو گئے سیکنڈ ورلڈ وار ہو گئی جب جنگ عظیم کے دوران گیارہ سال نہ جماعت کے پاس پیسے تھے کہ ان کو واپس بجوا سکے نہ حالات تھے نہ سفر سفری حالات اس قسم کے تھے تو تقریباً گیارہ سال جو ہے وہ ان کا وہ جو دورانیہ تھا وہ وہاں پہ گزرا اس طرح تقریباً نکاح کے انیس سال کے قریب جو ہے بعد میں میرے والد اور والدہ کا جو ہے نا وہ شادی ہوئی نکاح کے بعد رخستانہ جو ہوا اور جب ہوا تھا وہ دیکھ لیں والدہ بارہ سال سے کم تھے ایک سے قریب قریب تھے اور والد صاحب بھی اس وقت بہت ہی نہ اور جب جب شادی ہوئی ہے تو میرے والد صاحب کے بھی بال جو تھے اس میں چاندی آ چکی تھی اور والدہ کے بھی چاندی آ چکی تھی نائنٹین فورٹی سیون میں پھر جو ہے وہ ان کی رخستانہ ہوا تو یہ ایک بہت بڑا ایک وقفہ سا تھا جو اس کے درمیان ہوا نکاح کے اور رخستانہ میں ایسی مثال ہے جب بھائی کا داخلہ ہوا تو بہت تھوڑے ابا جی کی تنخواہ بہت کم تھی تو والد صاحب پریشان بھی تھے کہ میڈیکل میں خرچہ بہت ہوتا ہے تو قرضہ ہنسنا جماعت کا ہمارا خدا کا فضل ہے بڑا اچھا نظام ہے وہاں سے قرضہ ہنسنا پچاس روپے مل گیا کچھ اسکالرشپ مل گیا باقی والد صاحب مجھے یاد ہے رات کو بیٹھے ہوئے والدہ کو کہہ رہے تھے کہ پچاس روپے کم ہے وہ کس طرح ہوں گے تو والدہ نے کہا وہ فکر نہ کریں وہ میں اپنے جو آپ تنخواہ دیتے میں اسے کسی طرح سے کاٹ کے آپ کو دوں گی ضرور چنانچہ والدہ نے وہ بھی مجھے یاد ہے مرغیاں بڑھا لیں ان کے انڈے جو تھے وہ جو تھے وہ فروخت کر لیا کرتی تھیں دودھ زیادہ آتا تھا وہ دودھ بھی تھوڑا سا کم کر لیا شاید وہ اپنی قربانی دی ہوگی اپنے جو استعمال کرتی تھی مجھے تو ملتا رہا تھا تو یہ مجھے یاد ہے کہ وہ وقت جو ہے نا بڑے طریقے سے میری والدہ نے جو ہے وہ اس کو ضائع پھر انہوں نے وہاں کھانا کی مشکلات شروع میں تھیں بعد میں تو خیر حالات پھر آہستہ آہستہ ٹھیک ہوتے رہے لیکن وہاں بھی بھی انہوں نے جو ہے وہ والد کا جو ہے ہر مشکل جو ہے گھڑی میں وہ ساتھ دیا دا سیم تھنگ ایکچولی آئی ول اباؤٹ ٹو ریڈ اے کوٹ وچ دس تھنگ was recognized not only by the family, but by the Jamaat as well. And they have this feeling and um, in mind that uh, this young person, he left for the service of Islam and uh, he has not completed his uh, uh, Rukhstana, has not been uh, done so far. Uh, on the occasion of his uh, marriage ceremony, mm-hmm. when Rukhstana was going to happen, uh, that was the Asrana. And uh, the, uh, I will quote one, Uh, a statement from that address. ایسے تالے منت اور خوش پخت نوجوانوں میں سے ہمارے ایک نوجوان مجاہد مکرم حضرت مولانا نظیر میں مبشر سیالکوٹی ہیں جو مسلسل گیارہ سال افریقہ میں مجاہدانہ خدمات اور صرف و شانہ تبلیغ اسلام کا فریضہ ادا کرنے کے بعد حال ہی میں واپس آئے ہیں تشریف لائے ہیں اب جب کہ نوجوانی کا بہترین زمانہ خدا تعالیٰ کی راہ میں گزار کر لوٹے ہیں تو داڑھی میں سفید بال آ چکے ہیں انقریب رخسانہ کی وہ تقریب منعقد ہونے والی ہے جو محض علائے کلمت اللہ کی خاطر گیارہ سال سے ملتوی چلی آ رہی تھی احباب دعا فرمائیں کہ خدا تعالیٰ اس مخلص نوجوان کی اس بہترین قربانی کو خاص طور پر شرف قبولیت عطا فرمائے اور اس جوڑے پر اپنی برکات نادر فرمائے سو دیٹ واز دی ٹائم ون ہی کیم بیک بیئرڈ started to grow white, not only his, his wife's uh, uh, hair started to turn um, uh, white. And uh, that was the time, that long time they spent. And that was the first sacrifice, sacrifice when even the Rukhstana has not been uh, done. Uh, the sacrifice of uh, Mumani Jan started. We have seen Mumani Jan that uh, she spent his life in a very, uh, with patience and thankfulness. She always obeyed um, Mamo Jan. She was very kind to his own children and to all the relations of his husband. I mean, as we, she was, whenever we, um, would go to her house. She was always very kind and very um, loving to us. I remember uh, on occasions of Eid, she used to bring 
on that night, on that moon night when we saw the uh, moon, uh, she used to bring uh, gifts, Eidi, for us. I will never forget that. She, uh, when, when we used to go there and we uh, saw that the small children, especially girls, they come after Asr prayer and uh, mom, uh, Mami Jan uh, teach them Quran and sometime the girls come to learn English and other uh, mathematics or something. And he regularly helps them without any uh, money, without any, it's not a uh, commercial or commercial basis, but just to help the local uh, mohallas. Um, so this was her life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Because uh, I'm almost approaching towards the end of the program, and though it's very difficult to you know, do justice to someone's life in just an hour's program. But then nevertheless, you have narrated uh, many incidents uh, that indeed are very faith-inspiring. Uh, um, if I could just ask you that if you could relate some of your you know, fondest memories that you have of uh, Hazrat Mulana uh, Nazir al Bashir sahab. Whenever I saw him, I, you'll see people, if they are s sitting, then they will sit silently. His silence was this, Astaghfirullah Rabbi Ibn Kullah Mustafa Peter Adur Salamat. These were, this was his silence. That whenever he's silent, he was not silent, he was saying, Dhruj Sharif or Astaghfirullah Rabbi. So this was his habit. Uh, he was gardening, he was fond of gardening. He used to uh, do gardening in his uh, lawn and he's saying the same thing. He's talking to us, and suddenly there's a pause, and he started to say, Dhruj Sharif. He, he was very kind. He taught me personally the tricks of gardening and farming. I learned so much from him. He, he was a role model for me. He was like a father. Uh, even after the demise of my father, he was the eldest and he was um, like a father. We always uh, go to him and get advice, or say a prayer. And uh, I remember once my elder sister, uh, she asked uh, Mahmoud and that please pray for me. And uh, he said in a bit uh, annoying voice, do I have to ask you to pray? It means that I always pray for her. Remember you in, in uh, my prayers. So this was yeah, yeah, okay. personality. Because I mean, 1997, on the 23rd of February, uh, after having lived such an inspirational life, uh, full of dedication uh, and sacrifice uh, for the service of Islam in Ahmadiyyat, uh, Hazrat Mulana Sahib departed from this temporary abode uh, and returned back to his uh, true creator. Um, if you could just tell us about the atmosphere at that time, if you can recall you know, how people remembered him, and even now, how do they remember him, uh, and during, particularly during that time? These type of people, they were assets of our Jamaat. They were role model for our Jamaat, because people know that how they have spent their life, about their sacrifices. And uh, that was the source of our prayers. Whenever we need, we were in trouble, or we need something from God, we, we, we would go to them. And that thing, we will not get back. We won't get it back. So now people are deprived of this thing. And that was the thing people actually talked about, that mm. no, we won't get this thing. I mean, personally, if you ask me, then when I heard that thing, at that th time, I thought, I considered myself that I have been offered again. So whole Rabba, whole Jamaat, they remember him. Uh, I, I remember the, on the occasion of um, 
and Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabe uh, announced his um, death and so he was about to say his Dua Janaza Ghaib, he quoted reference and which, uh, which he said that he was the a, a complete statue of humbleness and he has a special relationship with God. Jazakallah. Thank you very much for giving us a, a, an invaluable insight into the life of Hazrat uh, Mulana Nazir al Bashir Sahib. Uh, we thank you and the members of your family and friends for taking time out uh, and narrating these incidents. Uh, truly, they are undoubtedly a source of inspiration for all of us. Um, Jazakallah uh, for joining us on today's program. And in, inshallah, in the next episode of Servants of Allah, we will be discussing the life of another very prominent personality of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Uh, for now, we will close the program with one final clip that perhaps summarizes the life and character of Hazrat Mulana Nazir Ahmad Mubashir Zahib. But from all of us here, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Albata Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Rabbe ne, jo us wakt London mein the, آپ نے جو ان کی وفات پر ان کو جو خراج تحسین پیش کیا وہ میں الفاظ اختصاراً بتانا چاہتا ہوں تاکہ معلوم ہو کہ ان کی حیثیت خلیفۃ المسیح کے نزدیک کیا تھی حضور نے مختلف ان کے بارے میں جو باتیں فرمائیں ان میں سے یہ باتیں قابل ذکر ہیں آپ نے فرمایا کہ انہوں نے سچی پاکیزگی کا نمونہ پیش کیا تعلق بلّہ میں آپ کو ایک عجیب مقام حاصل تھا یعنی خود حضرت خلیفۃ المسیح رابع فرما رہے ہیں کہ تعلق بلّہ میں آپ کو ایک عجیب مقام حاصل تھا آپ مستجابات دعوات بزرگ تھے آپ نہ صرف فرمایا آپ نہ صرف تاریخی آمدیت کا حصہ بن چکے ہیں بلکہ اپنی ذات میں تاریخی آمدیت کا ایک حسین باپ تھے تو حضور کے یہ الفاظ جو ہیں آپ کی ذات کے بارے میں کہ آپ کیسی کس شخصیت کے مالک تھے آپ کی ذات کو سمجھنے کے لیے حضور کے یہ الفاظ کافی ہیں